Well, hello and welcome back to the Fin to the Woods podcast. It's been a while, hasn't it? It's been quite a long time since my last episode, about two months. And I do apologise for that, but I've just been very, very busy. I did a show at the end of November. I wasn't in it, but I was working on a play called The Antipodes, which was lovely. And then I went home and worked on Panto over Christmas. We did 33 performances, although I was ill for quite a few of them, but we don't talk about that. And then I'm back now at uni working on Stephen Sondheim's company. So it's been a very busy couple of months, so that's why... The podcast had to kind of take a little bit of a sidestep for a while, but it's back in full force for 2023, and I'm looking at doing some interviews and just really pushing the podcast and pushing it as far and wide as I possibly can. So to start off the year, I thought we can look forward and see what I'm looking forward to over the next year, what shows are coming up and what I'm excited to see. Let me just start this off by saying, obviously, this isn't everything that's coming onto the theatrical stage over the next year because Chichester haven't announced their season yet. The National haven't announced their season yet. It's There's a lot of stuff that will be announced. There was rumblings of a transfer of the Into the Woods production from Bath to the West End. I don't know if that's still happening anymore. There's just bits and bobs along the way which will be announced, which will be wonderful. But this is just kind of what has been announced already. Now that I am based in Guildford, it's very handy really because it's extremely close to London, extremely close to London Waterloo to be specific, but also it's close to some lovely touring venues like the Yvonne Arno in Guildford. You've also got the new Victoria Theatre in Woking, you've got the new Wimbledon Theatre which isn't very far, so luckily when shows tour I'm able to go and see them. My main aim when I go to the theatre is to see something different. And I don't necessarily want to go and see something again. I like to try every time I'm in London or going to a theatre is to see something that I haven't seen before or a new production of a show that I've seen before, that kind of thing. So the first tour that I really want to see this year is The King and I because it's the Lincoln Centre production and it's got Helen George from Call the Midwife as Anna Leah Owens. I mean brilliant casting but I missed it when it was at the Palladium quite a few years ago with Kelly O'Hara and Ken Watanabe and I'm really annoyed I never got to go and see it so I'm going to make sure I go to see that because it's a classic and I've never seen The King and I ever and I listened to it the other day and I thought it's a little bit boring but you know I'm sure I'll enjoy it it's Rodgers and Hammerstein and I feel like I need to go and see it really to expand my horizons the other tour that I really want to go and see is The Bodyguard And now, I haven't seen The Bodyguard. It's got Melody Thornton from The Pussycat Dolls in. And also, it's Whitney Houston. What's not to love? And that film's great. So if the show is as good as the film, it'll be fine. And the other one I want to go and see, the other tour, is Winnie the Pooh. Now, you might think, what is he on about? However, this is this production that was off-Broadway earlier last year. And apparently, it's wonderful. And it's all puppets. And it looks so cute. And... It's coming to Guildford, so I think I'm going to go. Not by myself, I think I'll force someone else to come with me, but I just want to see Winnie the Pooh puppets. I want to see them sing all the songs that I grew up with, do you know what I mean? Like, who doesn't want to see that? As you all probably know, I'm a sucker for a musical revival. I love it. I love, love, love when they take a classic and reimagine it for today's audiences and make it even better than it was when it first appeared on the West End Broadway or regional stage. And there's lots of wonderful revivals going into London this year. And there's a few that I desperately want to see. The first one being Guys and Dolls. This is this new immersive production at the Bridge Theatre. And the casting is brilliant. If you haven't seen it already, go and look it up because everyone in it is fab. But I'm just intrigued how they're going to make Guys and Dolls immersive. Like when they go to Havana, are they going to force you to dance? When they're like gambling, do we have to throw dice when they're doing bushel and a pick, are we going to have to pretend we're like farm people? I don't know. I'm intrigued to see how it all works. And I do love that show. And it's a proper classic Broadway musical. It's one of the greats. And yeah, I've never seen it be done professionally. I did it when I was in year seven. But that's probably not going to be at the same calibre as the West End performance. But you never know. The next West End revival I really want to see is Sexy Oklahoma. Now, I know it's another Rodgers and Hammerstein, but also, it's not called Sexy Oklahoma, it is just called Oklahoma. But this production was meant to be quite sexy, apparently. It was on Broadway about four or five years ago, won the Tony Award for Best Musical Revival, 
and it's just a completely reimagined and stripped back look at Oklahoma. And again, it was on at the Young Vic last year, and it's quite immersive. You like everyone sits around, and they they did serve you food on Broadway. I don't know if they serve you food here in London. I'm not too sure, but apparently it's wonderful. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing that and a new take on one of the oldest musicals around. 42nd Street is also coming back to Sadler's Wells and also going on a UK tour. Now this intrigues me because this show was only in the West End four years ago at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane in a very impressive and well-respected production. So to bring it back so soon, I think it's a little bit risky, but what do I know, let's be honest. But I'm looking forward to see if they do anything different with it, if it's going to be a completely new design, new feel to the show. I don't know, but I love 42nd Street. I love tap dancing. I did a one-night-only performance in that show last year, which was hilarious, but fun at the same time. But, yeah, I'm very much intrigued as to how they're going to make it different to that production that I loved so much. The Regents Park Open Air Theatre is also producing two musical revivals for their summer season, which are Once on This Island and La Cage aux Folles. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing these two shows. I've never seen them before. I know Once on This Island vaguely. I know La Cage vaguely. Obviously, it's Jerry Herman, so I'm probably going to love it. But it's very exciting to see two shows that have been around and have a very good reputation and lots of people love them and see them outside, which is always fun. I went to Regent's Park for the first time last year to see 101 Dalmatians, and it's just a very bizarre feeling sitting outside and watching a two and a half hour long musical. It's just, it it, it, it confuses the senses, well it confuses mine. And obviously you've got all the big new musicals that will be opening this year as well, or have opened already and I just haven't seen them. Like Newsies, I still haven't got round to seeing Newsies, but I think I'm going next month, I think I'm going in February, but it's had such good reviews and such good reception, everyone I know who's been to see it has said it's well worth going and well worth seeing and paying all that money for, so I'm intrigued, it's just in a funny place, it's at the Troubadour, Troubadour, Wembley Park, which is a little bit out of the way, I kind of wish it was in the West End because it makes everyone's life just that little bit easier, but who knows, maybe it will transfer, maybe. I've just realised I've missed out a revival that I want to go and see. Groundhog Day, the musical adaptation written by Tim Minchin, starring Andy Carl, was on in the West End fairly recently over the last few years, and it's making its well-deserved return. I didn't see it when it was on the first time round, but apparently everyone did. The World and His Wife went to see that production, and it wasn't on for that long, so I think some people are lying. But I'm excited to see that show finally and um, lots of people love it and it's become kind of a fan favorite within the theater industry so i'm very intrigued i know i keep on saying i'm intrigued by all these productions but i genuinely am it's what i enjoy and seeing all these new shows and revivals and plays and everything excites me circling back to the new musicals the great british bake-off musical yes you heard me right the great british bake-off musical i can't believe this has happened slash happening Whose idea was this? I mean, it got great reviews when it was on in Cheltenham, so I suspect it's going to be brilliant. But are we going to have a singing Mary Berry? A dancing Paul Hollywood? A jiving Mel and Sue? A rapping Sandy Toxfig? I don't know where it's going to go. Are they going to dance with some ciabatta? Are they going to spin on roller skates holding a cake? I don't know. I don't know. And I'm slightly scared. I'm really happy for this new musical because it's a new British musical which happens so rarely and we need a lot more of. And it's called Standing at the Sky's Edge. It was on at the Sheffield Crucible in 2019 and again last year, I believe. And it follows three families on a council estate in Sheffield over the course of, I think, 40, 50 years. And it's apparently one of the best new British musicals we've had in decades. And, yeah, it's going to the National, which is such a brilliant home for it to have. And I really hope it gets such a big push. And I really hope it's good. That's the one thing I hope it is. But it's always lovely to see brand new British writing because we don't see that that often. Six was probably, and everybody's talking about Jamie, are the two ones that stick in my mind over recent years. And they're five, six years old. And we haven't had much in between that. So 
yeah, fingers crossed, it's absolutely wonderful and it goes to storm the world. But it's not all about the musicals, you know. I do like to go and see a few plays, like Noises Off, which press night is the 25th of January, which is the time I am recording currently. And I've never seen that play and I really desperately want to see it. 222, starring Cheryl, aka Cheryl Cole, Cheryl Fernandez, Fasini, Cheryl, whatever her name is. But I really want to see if she can act. Because, obviously, she's never acted before. I mean, if you've seen that video of her in Greece, she's hilarious. So if the part's funny, she'll do very well. But, yeah, got to see her in that. And also, Lemons, 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 Lemons. That's the full title, I believe. Starring Aidan Turner, a.k.a. Poldark, and Jenna Coleman, a.k.a. Queen Victoria. And it's a very short play. It's only 75 minutes. And it opened last week, I think, near the middle to the end of January. And it's going on tour, I think it's going to Brighton, it's going across a few venues across the country. But I just want to see those two on stage. And of course, Shirley Valentine starring Sheridan Smith. I mean, who doesn't want to see that? It sounds like the hottest ticket in town. There's a couple of new long-running productions that I desperately want to go and see. Crazy For You, which opens in June, for a apparently limited run of like 30-40 weeks, which is basically an open-ended run, to be honest. And yeah, that's the transfer from Chichester, and I loved it, saw it twice, and I can't wait to see it again. And the other is Mrs Doubtfire. Now, I saw Mrs Doubtfire on Broadway on its first ever performance on Broadway. It didn't last too long there. I don't know how long it's going to last here, but it's currently open-ended, the run. And I think they've probably changed quite a bit of it, rewritten it, and I'm, I'm intrigued once more about how they've approached this musical now. But there's also a list I have here of shows that have been running for a while that I just have never seen, but I desperately need to see. These are ABBA Voyage, the ABBA Avatar thing. I need to see that. Lion King. I've never seen Lion King. I am a disappointment to the theatre community. Mamma Mia isn't ticked off on my list, but I saw it a couple of weeks ago, and I had a great time. I went by myself, felt a bit sad, but, you know, it was, it was worth it. The Book of Mormon... Also been running for quite a while now, still never got round to seeing that. To Kill a Mockingbird, a very heavy play, so I've got to be in the mood for that one. I think I will be at some point, maybe. Moulin Rouge, apparently, I just need to see the set. I think that's all anyone ever says. And I do like a jukebox musical, but maybe not one that is as cheesy as Moulin Rouge, because it does give me cheesy vibes, but we'll wait and see. Witness for the Prosecution, this is the Agatha Christie thing where you sit in an actual courtroom on the South Bank and you're like part of the jury and you watch the trial happen. That sounds right up my street. I love a good episode of Murder, She Wrote or Midsummer Murders. The Mousetrap. Now, The Mousetrap's been on for 70 plus years. I think it's its 70th or 80th anniversary this year. And I still have never seen it. And again, I love a murder mystery, so I need to make sure I see that. And Les Mis. I've never seen Les Mis. Isn't that bad? When you think about it, it's one of the most beloved musicals of all time and I just can't be bothered to go and see it mainly because it's never got discounted tickets it's always very expensive so maybe I've got to save up to see Les Mis over in the US there's so much on Broadway which I wish I could see like the new production of Sweeney Todd I desperately wish I could fly over and see that Parade, the new revival of Parade with Ben Platt I desperately want to see that the new rumoured revival of Pal Joey which is going to be opening maybe, possibly this year, which could be very exciting. But also things like Sunset Boulevard, which is in Washington, I think, at the Kennedy Centre, starring Stephanie J. Block. And unfortunately, it was on Broadway fairly recently with Glenn Close, so I don't think it will transfer, but I wish it would. Not that I'd ever go to Broadway to see it, because I can't afford to fly out there. However, I wish I could. But as I said earlier, things will get announced, exciting new projects will be revealed and there'll be more wonderful things to see over the next year. But that's currently the list of kind of the definite things that I want to see. Well, thank you for listening to this short but sweet first episode back of 2023. I promise you that this year is going to be fabulous for the podcast. I hope to get some brilliant guests, some interesting people and talk to them about their lives, their careers and everything in between. So yes, I hope to see you again soon, and thank you for listening to the Fin to the Woods podcast.